So if you want to spend less time doing this and more time camping and hiking and other fun things, follow some of our tips on conserving water and you'll spend less time at the dump station and more time enjoying your camping. Welcome back to Zephyr's Travels and in this week we're going to talk about how you can save water when you're camping. Really not so much about saving water, it's more about the wastewater that you're producing and trying to reduce the amount of wastewater that goes into your gray tank and your black tank. Mostly your gray tank. Because that limits how long you can uh, camp. A lot of campgrounds don't have sewer hookups, especially like state parks and such. And you're kind of limited to the length of your stay to how large your tanks are or otherwise you've got to empty your tanks in the middle of your stay which means hooking up your, your trailer and moving it to the dump station and dumping it or having a blue boy or something that you can use to dump your tank into and then take that to the dump station either way it's not a fun experience and it gets in the way of you know having the good time that you are at the campground some of the ways that you can save water is by taking what was commonly called like a navy shower and that's a shower that you know, you turn the water on and off and try to consume as little water as you can while you're showering. And what you need on that, obviously, is you're going to, on your shower, you're going to need an on and off valve on the shower head or on the, on the hose going to the shower head. Now, our trailer, we, it came with a button on and off. It came on the shower head. We changed that out to a little lever. And the reason we did that is the button, when you turn it off, it still dripped a fair amount of water. And I think they do that on purpose because they feel that if it, that if water isn't moving through the pipes, it could cool off and you could start getting cold water. <clears throat> but I think the trade-off of that is you're, you're consuming too much water while you're taking a shower. So having one that actually shuts off completely or even can be variable that you can turn it to maybe half a position and reduce the amount of water that you got in your shower. So in the shower, some tips you can use to conserve water. Down here is an on-off valve. This on-off valve is different than the one that came with it. The one that came with it was when you turn it off, it would still trickle some water. This has a complete off and on, so it will not allow any water to flow when you're in the off position, so it conserves water there. So something else you may want to try doing is to change your shower head out to an oxygenic shower head. And the advantage of this is it uses less water, but still gives you a good feeling shower. Some of the low flow uh, shower heads that you can get you know really feel like they're just dribbling on you and this actually mixes air in with the water and it makes it still feel like you're getting a, a decent um, shower so this one this really helped this was one of the first things we did on our airstream because our, our first trip out camping we went to a campground that had water and electric but didn't have a sewer hookup and we were just staying, I think we were only staying, you know, three or four nights. And by the time we got to the fourth night, our tank was so full that we couldn't take showers that morning. So, you know, that's one of the things that all these things that we're telling you were, is to try to get it so that you can spend a week camping in your trailer without having to hitch up and drain your tank. That's the goal. And for us, that would be to be able to take some type of shower every day. I mean, you could skip showers and, and extend that period very easily, but we like to take a shower every day. And, and what you find is you don't really need to use as much water as you think you do. So that's a good tip here is to change out the shower head. The biggest tip that I have for you is when you're going to start your shower and you've got that first rush of cold water, don't let it go down the drain, capture it, because you can use that in other places. So I'm turning it down to hot. And you can see I'm capturing the water in, in a pitcher. And I'll let this run until the water gets warm.
right about there. Or turn off the valve. You can see that valve completely shut the water flow off. And now I'll take this pitcher of water and I can use it to wash dishes. I could use it to flush the toilet. Actually, that's my preference. I'd rather move this water into the black tank because then it's less water that's gonna go into the gray tank. So I use this most of the time, I, I'll use it to flush the toilet during the day. And this really comes in handy, especially on your last day when you want a pitcher of water just to put some water back in the black tank after you've drained it. So this works good. You fill your gray tank before you fill your black tank. And it's always good to have a little extra water in your black tank. So by using that pitcher and capturing that water and then moving it and, and disposing of it in the black tank, you know, it actually reduces the amount of gray water you're, you're producing. And it puts a little more liquid in your gray tanks. So it helps it flush a little bit better when you go to drain that. All right, so now it's time we're gonna take our shower. We won't take you guys with us on that. And then we'll check and see how much water we used this today in our showers and see where we're at for the rest of the week. Show you where we are on water. This is our gray tank. Gray tank is at 69. And let's wait till that cycles off. Our black tank is also at 69. Kind of odd, but makes, I guess. And our fresh water is at 25%. And we've had to add more fresh water. We've added five gallons of fresh water. So we will be easily be able to take showers today. Probably we will take showers tomorrow if we were staying here another day. And that would put us at five to six days without needing to drain the tanks. Probably could squeeze seven out of there. Now sometimes when you're camping, you have a place where you have a water hookup, but no sewer hookup. And that can be tricky because typically what's gonna happen is that water is gonna be at a higher water pressure than what you typically have when you're trying to conserve water. If you're using your water pump, that water pressure is considerably lower than if it's coming out of a hose. So one tip to conserve water would be to add a water pressure regulator like this to your water line and then turn the pressure way down. And that will help you consume less water and, and prevent you from filling your tanks too quickly. Another option would be don't even hook the hose up continue to work off of your water tank and then if you need to add water while you're there connect the hose refill your tank but don't hook into the city water and just use the city water for when you've got a you know water and sewer hookup you can also save water when you're washing the dishes and that's a, besides taking a shower that's probably the next big water consumption that you have and so one of the things that you can do is when you put water in your sink to start washing your dishes Put just a low amount, maybe put an inch or so of water in the bottom of the sink, put all your flatware, you know, your knives, forks, spoons and such, into the sink there and start washing them. As you rinse them, you'll be adding a little bit more water to the sink, so you're going to get double use out of that water, not only just rinsing your utensils, but you're also going to add into the amount of water that you have in there, so that when you get to the plates or the pots and pans, you've got an adequate amount of water there and at the same time you haven't used any more than what you really needed. You can also substitute paper plates for regular plates. If you really want to try to save you can substitute uh, plastic silverware for the regular um, silverware. So anything you can do, anything you can come up with to reduce the amount of water that you're consuming while you're uh, dry camping, um, it will be a savings for you and it will extend the amount of time that you can camp. So those are a couple ideas that you can use to save water and reduce the amount of wastewater in your gray tank. And we found that for us, we've been able to extend our tanks to between six and possibly even seven days of camping without having to drain the tanks, you know, in between. And that's with taking a shower you know, every day. I hope you found these tips to be helpful. And if you did, please give us a thumbs up. If you have any questions about what we talked about today, be sure to leave a comment. I will answer any questions you have. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to our channel. We post new videos every week and we'd love to have you guys follow along in our adventure. And so until the next time, we'll see you guys down the road.